Hi, Patty. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video interview with me today. For our audience, could you please introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background of, of your experience in l and I'd love to. Um, thanks for having me, Guy. Um, so I've been in l and since, uh, oh, probably the 80s. Um, I, I, like most of the people in our field, I started out at, as an individual contributor and uh, ended up being really good at what I did and, and was asked to take over training. Um, I realized pretty fast along that path that I needed to know more. Um, so um, I, I, was, I was doing business kinds of works and um, I got into healthcare and that's where I stayed for a long time. And uh, we were training uh, doctors in things like um, how to do coding. Um, and we were training employees in a variety of skills. And um, we did some things back then that were kind of interesting, um, but they really worked for us. One was that we made, made sure that our training department was not just we were out there training, but we got we got supervisors throughout all of the clinical areas on board to be part of the training group. Um, so so things were relevant, and I learned a lot from that. Um, and I got into HPT because one of the things I knew I needed to know was how to get good results. And so I took a, a workshop with Gary Rumler. Um, and it was early on and he wasn't really well known and it heavily influenced, I, I'd say it influenced everything I do um, to this day, um, that, that uh, results are really important. And if we don't have results, we need to, we need to not do any training is what I would say. Well, thank you for that. Can you, uh, now for our main event, can you answer our question here? What to measure and how to measure the impact of instruction in an enterprise learning context? Yeah, that's a really good question. And when I was thinking about this, I thought about there are macro approaches and micro approaches to answering that question. I'd like to start with a macro approach and then move into um, kind of more of a micro approach in some of the things I'm doing. So the macro approach answers the question, does the instruction actually deliver the needed results? Is it efficient and is it effective? Um, and so that leads to how do we know what results are needed? And um, we first have to determine that. We have to determine what are the what are why are we building this instruction? Is instruction even needed? Um, and that gets back to to performance technology and and the thinking about what what are the things that are impacting performance on the job? Um, only a few of which are 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 things that can be improved with instruction. Um, and that's skills and knowledge that are needed to, to work. Um, although even, even with skills and knowledge, um, there are things that even if you give people the skills and knowledge, they still can't perform as needed. Um, for instance, um, incentives. Um, lots of times people are incentivized for doing X and we're training them to do Y and we're wondering why our results don't work. So one of the micro approaches is what happens after instruction on the job and, and are they using what they learned? Um, and a lot of times we find out they took the instruction, uh, we did, we did uh, measurement of learning results using assessments and we find out they did fine with the assessment, but they're not, they're not using the instructions. So um, our, our goal then is to figure out, well, why? So, so I'd like to talk a little bit about how to figure that out, how to figure out what goes on after instruction. Um, and that's a piece of measurement 
that a lot of people know the need to measure whether people learned what you taught them. But not that many people realize that the real gold here is what happens in real life uh, on the job um, with what we've taught them. We found, you know, when I was working for that healthcare organization, we found out we would teach them all this administrative things about, about taking payments, about uh, finding out what insurance they had. And we found out that, and, and the reason that that instruction was important was that we didn't make any money as a healthcare organization. And healthcare is, like, is a little bit like grocery stores. The margins are really low. So if you're, if you're not doing it right, you're losing money. And if you're losing money, you can't, you can't afford to be in business very long. So, um, so we'd find out, we'd go back, we'd go back into the clinics and find out, well, what was happening at the front desk compared to what we taught them? And we found out they weren't doing what we taught them, even though they could do it um, in, in instruction, they could not do it at the desk. And, and we learned a lot about what incentives and what what the supervisor wanted them to do, what was actually pragmatic and possible, and what wasn't. Um, and so um, I, I'll take this I'll take this a little more narrow now. When when what I'm finding out about my own instruction, um, one one of the macro approaches I really like is Robert Brinkerhoff's success case system where you go out into the real world and talk to people who have taken your instruction and find out what happened with it. Um, so, so I've been doing that and I've, I do it very informally um, with my multiple choice questions classes. I do it very informally by following up with people. Are, are there any questions you have? Because I find that if I ask people, how did the instruction work for you? Um, if I'm very direct, I don't, I don't get the stories. I get, I get, well, it worked pretty well, or, or well, you know, I had some problems with it, and I don't get. So I, so I, I go back to the people who've taken my instruction, and I say I'd like to talk to you about the instruction because I'm trying to improve it, um, which is true. I am trying to improve it, and the instruction, and, and that should be a goal of one of the things to measure. Our instruction is rarely perfect, um, and different groups have different needs. Um, so, how do we meet them? How do we how do we meet them where they are? Um, so, what I found out about my own instruction is um, that even when even when I have seen on my end that it didn't seem people were very engaged, a lot of times teams have taken what they've learned and they've taken the materials that I give them and they get into study mode. How can we improve our questions? And that's just fabulous, right? It's exactly what I want. Um, I guess the last thing I'd like to, me uh, to mention is, is that there's a lot of off the cuff things that happen after instruction that can give you a really good idea of um, how well it works for people and whether they can even use it. And that is um, listening to what they tell you. Just people get back to you and ask questions. I just had someone ask, send me an email about, um, about how, how to provide feedback on multiple choice questions. She had a very specific instance and I, I tell people at the end of the instruction, this is, this is a conversation, we have started a conversation that I want to go on forever, or, or at least as long as we're alive. <laughs> and and um, so when you have questions, I wanna hear from you. Um, they hear that as great, I've got support. I hear that as I wanna know how to continue to improve. And so she asked me about feedback and we got into a five or six um, email rounds back and forth about her question. Um, so go back to the, the original question. What should we measure? How should we measure it? 
Um, for me, one of the most important things about, about measuring instruction is, is do they use it? And, and the ways to find out are um, myriad. There's tons of ways to find out that, you know, it's, we're, we're in the period now where we're all at home and we're not really um, talking to each other face to face. So I'm using email and I'm inviting people to Zoom meetings where I just want to talk, what questions have come up for you? What struggles have you had? And, and I credit Robert Brinkerhoff for, for opening my eyes to, to a methodology of following up. And that's what I'd like to say today. Patty, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Uh, yes, Rob Bringeroff is somebody that uh, everybody should follow and uh, look at his uh, uh, methodologies. Thanks for sharing again today, and uh, you have a good day. Thanks for having me, Guy. I enjoyed it. Bye-bye.